What's up Team Hawk Owls? So today we're gonna review Keystone Ski Resort. Arguably one of my favorite ski resorts in the entire you know, world. I, don't, I haven't gone the world yet. But one of my favorite ski resorts, one of, out of all of the resorts I've gone to, Keystone is definitely one of my favorites and we're gonna review it. Now this review is gonna be off of 10 categories. Each ta category is gonna get a score from zero to 10. And zero being not applicable, they don't have it. One being terrible, 10 being best in the world, five is an average score. So that's how we're gonna kind of structure what these topics about the resort. And I'm gonna hopefully help you guys decide if Keystone is a ski resort you wanna go to on a vacation. So let's jump into the Keystone review. <music> So let's start with the prices. How much does it cost to go to Keystone? Last year, I think I saw the average day price was a little over $100, which some days getting to about $120 for a single day, which is definitely up there, but that's not a, an uncommon price for ski resorts in Colorado, from Copper to Breck Vale, Beaver Creek. That's a very common day price, ticket price. But if you buy the Epic Pass or the Keystone Base Pass or the Epic, like, all the epic season passes that they offer, there's honestly like really good deals. Like for like 450 bucks or something, you can get the Keystone Breck Pass and you can ride Keystone as much as you want. So it's really hard to say that the price is bad maybe for a day pass, but if you go ahead and you buy a season pass early, it's actually gonna be a very fair and awesome price for you. So when it comes to the pass prices and how expensive a pass comes, I gave it a five, an average score. I thought it was a very average price, especially if we're in Colorado. is ease of access. How easy is it to get to, to Keystone? How easy is it to park your car, to fly into Colorado and then get to the resort? And honestly, I think it's one of the easiest ski resorts to get to. Thankfully, they have this huge parking lot right in front of the ski resort. So you park at the base of the mountain and you walk five minutes and you're on a chairlift and they have like a side uh, entrance. And like they have so many options for parking, but also like you just fly to DIA and there's the summit stages. There's all these systems and Ubers and like to get from DIA up to Silverthorne, it's not that bad. Now, that being said, on a Saturday, driving up from Denver to Keystone is gnarly, especially if you don't leave early enough, you can get stuck in some gnarly traffic. So that's a bummer. But overall, getting to Keystone is not that hard. And with it being one of the first resorts you're gonna run into coming up from Denver, I gave it a number seven, or a score of seven on ease of access. I definitely think that uh, Keystone is a pretty easy place to get to. Now lodging, I don't know any prices with lodging. I don't I don't get lodging because I live right next to Keystone, so I don't have to do that. But I do know that there's so much lodging available. If you want to stay in the village, that's an option. If you want to stay next to Keystone, that's an option. If you want to stay over in Silverthorne and then get to, to Keystone, or you want to stay in Copper or Frisco, like literally unlimited options when it comes to lodging. You can do Airbnbs, you can do hotels, you can do um, condos. So Keystone has lodging, period. Like finding the right price for you now that's up to you but as a review it's an eight now how are the chairlifts does keystone have good chairlifts and i think keystone actually has some of the best chairlift systems out there even on the craziest most insane days at keystone if you know how to ride keystone you know where to go you can honestly not ever wait in lift lines at keystone and between having two main like a gondola and a, a chairlift at the base of their mountain to having a park specific chairlift like they crushed the chairlift game. I really think Keystone has a great chairlift system and they might be putting in a new one that accesses like a couple of more bowls and stuff. So like Keystone is definitely dominating uh, when I think it comes to like their chairlifts, where they should be, how they work. And so I gave them a really good score when it comes to chairlifts and I gave Keystone a nine. But of course the chairlifts don't matter if it doesn't access good terrain. So let's talk about Keystone's runs. Keystone, it's got some incredible runs. It's not a very beginner friendly resort though. So if you have a bunch of kids, I don't recommend Keystone for kids. They only have like two greens on the whole mountain. We can get into that. It's kind of a disaster. But overall, if you're an average skier, average snowboarder, it's a great mountain. Tons of blues, uh, blacks for all the hard riders. The the runs are they're steep in some sections. It's not a very, it, it doesn't flatten out really ever. It's a pretty solid pitch the whole way down. I love Keystone's runs. They do lack bull riding a little bit. They have a bull in the back and 
some of their best bowl riding. You gotta either get a cat tour to it, which is very expensive, or you can hike to it. But overall, like for runs and everything, I thought like, Keystone has a great terrain. I, I, I've ridden it for a long time, so I know uh, how good it is and where the good spots are. So I would give Keystone a seven when it comes to runs. Above average, not the best in the world. However, Keystone does have one of the best terrain parks in the world. Now the rails were a little sticky last year, but they still added in like 30 new huge rails that were incredible. They built some of the biggest parks. You got Area 51, it's so iconic. And er I, that is why I've always rode Keystone. That's why I've always loved Keystone, just Area 51. You go into this one section on the mountain, it has its own chairlift and you just get laps after laps after laps. You can get, I think five laps per hour, sometimes six, depending on how fast you're riding. They got beginner terrain all the way up to literally pro level features. Keystone builds the gnarliest park. It used to be second best in the world. So with that and knowing that, Keystone gets a nine when it comes to the terrain park. Definitely one of the best parks in the world. We'll see how it like, does this year because of COVID. I hear they're gonna be toning down terrain parks. But in years past, my experience with Keystone, one of the best parks. Now let's jump into the food. Keystone has tons of food options and obviously I can't taste it all. I can't buy it all, you know what I'm saying? But I've gone to Keystone enough. I know that there's plenty of food options around from resort offered food to like restaurants in the village. Keystone definitely has a really good variety of food all around and their actual resort prices uh, are still expensive. They, I mean, they're, they're what you would expect at a ski resort. But last year they did offer an $8 pizza, which was a really good deal and things like that. So Keystone got a seven when it comes to food. Not the best food options in the world. It's like, it's not like going to Breck and you can go down to the village. You get some of the best food in the world, but it is really good. Now kind of, I'm changing this topic from the last one when I did the uh, big snow review. So check that out if you wanted. And is this, it, this is actually would have made Big Snow's review score a little worse than if I, if I added this topic into it, but we're talking about employees. Now I'm not doing this just because of Keystone. I did want to do this at Big Snow because my opinion at Big Snow is they had employees that weren't skiers, skiers or snowboarders. So that made it difficult to kind of experience like the, their resort when you show up and someone's never skied or snowboarded before. That makes it really hard to ask them questions about skiing and snowboarding. But so with Keystone, we got to talk about the employees and I did have a horrible, we'll get to that. I had a horrible experience with employees, but overall like the employees there are average over the years that I've gone to Keystone, the 11, 13 years I've ridden there, uh, you get a mix of like really awesome employees, some kind of not sick employees, but just an average out of, like they're, they're not too bad. However, Keystone has this culture with their mountain safeties. The guys are supposed to protect the mountain and how they discriminate, discriminate, discriminate against the park riders, the people that are good snowboarders. And because they don't have a lot of greens on Keystone, if you get caught, being a good snowboarder on a green. They're gonna make you take a safety class, pull your pass, all this stuff. I think a lot of people in the community uh, has, has, has experienced what I've experienced with the mountain safety guys, which was a terrible experience. And if you missed that video, you can check that one out right there. So many people have experienced that, that there's no way that I could give them a good employee score. So uh, Keystone gets a solid three when it comes to employees. Some of the really awesome ones I've met over the years kind of pull that up a bit, but that overall experience I had, if I was a, if I was, traveling to a ski resort and I had that experience at that ski resort, I would never go back in, literally never go back again. Uh, I live next to Keystone and I know how good Keystone is. And that's the reason why I will continue to go back to Keystone, but I could see that being a complete trip ender for so many other people. So three on employees. Views and scenery. Now Keystone does have some of the sickest views out there that are super easy to get to. You go right up to the top of Durka Mountain and you can see all of Silverthorne, you can see Breck. So those are some of the most incredible views you can get on top of a ski resort, but it's only like two awesome views, looking at Breck and looking at Keystone. They, it's good, they got good views, but they're not the best views in the world. Uh, they're okay views for sure. So Keystone gets a seven, which is a great score when it comes to views. But man, I, I, the top of School Marm, looking down over Silverthorne and Frisco, Dillon Lake, one of the best views at a ski resort for sure. And the last topic, would I go back? Would I go back to Keystone and snowboard there? And the answer to that is absolutely. I love Keystone so much. It's my home mountain. It's the mountain I learned how to snowboard at and get good at snowboarding at. It has such a special place in my heart. And that's why even with that horrible experience with their employees, I would still go back to Keystone. But once again, if 
you don't have the love and passion for me of Keystone, I don't think you'd go back. But overall, I would give Keystone a seven on the would I go back. So really stoked that uh, Keystone is so close to me because it is one of the best resorts out there. Keystone, we're close to Brett Copper. We're gonna get to all of those reviews. So make sure you subscribe to the channel. I'm gonna review every resort that I've ever been to. I've been to so many, and these videos are to help you guys decide where you're gonna go on a trip. And so this score is a zero to 100. So Keystone got itself a 69 when it comes to uh, the score. Big Snow, if you wanna see what Big Snow score was, check it out right there. That's a ski resort in New Jersey. It's a snow dome, which is really cool. But Keystone is a big mountain. It's one of the Colorado's main mountains and it's a big tourist attraction, but it's mainly Denver's mountain. If I had to give it a title or who rides Keystone the most, it's the people down in Denver, all the, all the, I don't know, Denver rights. I don't know, what, what do you guys call it? Anyways, if you agree with my score or not, comment down below, what would you rate certain topics uh, and things like that. I would love to know what you think. I know a bunch of you guys are gonna be blowing me up about the bull riding at Keystone, but I really, I wrote some good bulls. I don't think Keystone has that sick of bulls. Also, don't forget to like the video if you want, share the video, all of that helps grow the channel. We're almost, it's almost the ski season, guys. I'm just out here gonna make a bunch of these videos for you. I, I, I'm like, oh, I'm dying for the ski and snowboard season and I'm, we're doing so much to get it ready. So be ready for some update videos, especially on the live streams we're gonna be talking about like, all the stuff that Colorado just said about the ski and snowboard season. So join me on the live streams and we're gonna talk about it. If you guys want any of the Evolution merch before the season starts, hoodies, t-shirts, hats, stickers, all of it guys, it's all linked in the description. Snag any of it, tag me on Instagram and I'll give you guys gear and sticker shout outs. But also make sure you follow my Instagram. I cover a bunch of sick topics on my Instagram. My stories are like a little insight behind the scenes into my life, but also it's a great way to stay current with what I'm doing, where I'm going, and you can DM me on Instagram too, which is a great, great part about it. And other than all that, Team Up Gals, thank you so much for reviewing a ski resort with me. We'll do another one soon. And as always, guys, thanks for watching. Keep evolving. We'll see you guys tomorrow. I'm on top of the ocean, living like life ain't frozen, feeling my feet been chosen for something other than motion, yeah. Mama told me I'ma be somebody. I ain't never gonna need nobody, no, no. I ain't never gonna need nobody, no cliffhanger. You. You know, I don't feel like this is fair.